cinematics.com and today we'll be showing you how to create this pass by transition effect in Adobe Premiere Pro so let's have a preview Alright, so that's a very creative transition that is really easy to do and you can also do this with people passing by. So let's fire up Premiere and let's see how it is done. Alright, here we are in Premiere Pro and I have right here two files, uh, footage 01 and footage 02. In the first footage you see me passing by my chair like so and in the second footage we have another just another scene uh, doing something different. If you want to use the same exact footage as I am you can download it with a link in the description and yeah let's get started. So uh, right here I will take my first footage and then I will select my second footage with shift and I will drag these into a new composition like so. So now I have the second one behind the first one because I selected the first one first. Okay so what I want to do now is I will set this to fit for now and I will go to the position where you just see like the edge of the chair so I'm going to stop it right here I think this is the correct position and once we are here I will drag this to the top and actually drag my other footage beneath it now I will click on this footage and go to the effects controls and here you can see opacity if we're going to zoom out a little bit so let's uh, set this to 25 for now uh, so we can actually mask it out we're going to move one frame forward right here, click on the pen tool and we're going to click something like so and close it down right here. And then I will press V on the keyboard so I select my regular selection tool and I want to click on the stopwatch for the mask as well. Okay so now to actually get an ID of your mask you can click on the mask here so you can see it but I'm going to toggle off opacity so we can actually see our original video. I will go one frame backwards and I will make sure that we drag this out of frame and then I'm going to do this with a few frames like move a bit forward maybe move all the way right here and we're going to drag this point right here uh, we can actually drag this also like right here and automatically it's going to create a keyframe right here because we click on the stopwatch for the mask path and if we're going back in time you will see that it's not fitting well so we are going to tweak this right now so go in between these keyframes and then you're going to just fix the mask as good as you can and of course you can also toggle frame by frame right here so uh, just check everything and make sure that you have a nice and clean animation going on so we're going to check up on everything so right here we just may need to make sure that we have it entirely in the frame and in most cases it doesn't need to be completely perfect because it's going to be a quick movement and you're not going to notice it while it's animating but if your object is slow uh, just try to do it as good as you can We can move this a little bit out of the way so we have a little bit more place and then once it's completely out of the frame we're also going to uh, yeah, get our mask out of frame. So let's do one double check uh, right here it's already out of frame so I'm going to close it right here and this should be good. Okay so uh, what you can do now is toggle back the opacity and now what you're going to see is if you hover and if we click uh, away right here so we don't select the mask so click next to it so we don't see the mask path. Uh, we can actually see that our original file is actually revealing right here and right here you can still see a few mistakes so you can still go back and tweak these if uh, if you find it necessary uh, but you can also increase your feather right here because currently it's very harsh if you set the feather to something like 50 you're going to get a soft edge and that way you're going to barely notice these mistakes as well uh, just like right here I see that uh, the blue is a little bit too exaggerated so I'm going to fix it uh, just here as well and that should fix it completely so let's see what this is doing okay so let's do a preview alright so that's a very cool 
All right, and there we have it. It's that easy to create. It's a really fun effect to use. I preferably use it when the object is completely blocking the frame and then revealing another image instead of having a smaller object revealing the other image. You can do that as well, depending on whatever you're shooting. For comedy, that might work. But just in my opinion, it looks better if it first blocks the frame and then reveals the other scene. Okay, and if you're wondering how I shot my footage, I shot my footage on the GH4 with the 12 to 35 millimeter from Panasonic 2.8. Uh, that's quite detailed for those that don't know anything about cameras, but for those that do, um, there you have the info. And I also use the Vigem, which is a 3-axis camera stabilizer. I already did a review on that, so if you're interested in that, you can go and check that out with the cards. And yeah, apart from that, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give this video a like and subscribe to the channel for more. So that's it for this video and see you in the next one. Goodbye.